This is Boomer Life on CIL 650. Need money. Need money. Talking about money, money, money. We need some money. We need some money. We need some Well, there's a pretty much a universal theme that I'm certainly going to get behind in a big hurry. We do need money. Lots and lots of moolah money. There you go. It's Boomer Life on CIL 650. Sterling Fox with Brett Luckin from Abacan and Associates. They are proposal administrators and trustees in bankruptcy with five offices around our provinces. We talked, Brett, uh, briefly in the last segment about uh, specifically zooming in on boomers. It's boomer right. life, after all. I mean, we would we would certainly be expected to address that. And you started talking about retirement and and how a lot of people are are actually quite literally put ret- putting retirement on hold yeah. because they're carrying too much debt. And then you added something that I really wanted you to expand on for a second. And it's, we're going to see, I think, more examples of it in the States first than we are here in Canada, but we are not immune from unexpected pension surprises. In other words, pension monies that we're expecting that may not materialize down the road because the company or the municipality or whatever can't afford to pay the pension. Yes. Um, you know, in its extreme form, I suppose you're looking at something like what's happening in Greece right now. Sure. Uh, the city of Detroit is another good example. Yes. I think where I think the bankruptcy judge there, in fact, uh, compromised many of the um, public pensions. Um, so in its extreme form, what you have is is such a large scale compromising of what people thought they were going to receive. Right. Okay. In its in a sort of less extreme. I mean, I'd, it's highly unlikely that anything like that will happen in Canada. Not that extreme. Not extreme. Sure. No. Right. But uh, what but disappointments on the pension but disappointments. side. Sure. You know, and I, I think what it really comes down to is um, something that, as trustees in bankruptcy, we tend to see a lot of, and that is, is. Um, a lack of accountability of personal responsibility to certain issues. So an example will be where people um, get themselves into debt, not only just because they don't really understand credit and the nature of credit, and yes, that is a huge factor, Mm -hmm. but also because perhaps there is um, not enough understanding of the personal accountability you hold when you take on debt. And obviously that, that then later on comes back and visits people because there's a lot of guilt and shame associated with realizing that you got yourself into a hole you probably could have avoided if you had you tried right and and at a pension fund issue there is obviously they got your public pension issues where there's an enormous amount of reliance on on the level of the public worker that that is what he or she is going to receive and it's unequivocal and it can never change right and i suppose what we should be looking at more in society is a little bit of personal accountability uh, and that personal accountability devolves down into the obvious budgets right are you budgeting? Do you understand that even if that pension flows in five years or 10 years from now, that it's going to be X amount per month? And when you look at what you're currently spending relative to what that pension is going to give you, can you live inside of that? Right. And of course, that's where the whole thing comes in, where you suddenly realize there's no way you're going to be able to pay back your credit card debt. It's just not possible. And this you is why, and this is why people are are saying that I I can't retire. I can't what are you retire at I can't retire. Absolutely, no, not a chance. I'm, I'm I in, have to keep working. I'm I have in no hawk choice. for serious bucks here. I and can't so retire. And so you you see public service people. In fact, uh, the in the public service, you see them retiring and then coming back again yes. and working again. And yep. that's practically it's just simply because they have no choice. There's no option that they have, right? And of course, then there's the whole thing about pension fund liabilities. Where will the pension you thought you were going to get? Is that in fact what will derive into your pocket at the end of the day right and i think that we should be taking responsibility for the fact that it may not be it may not be exactly what we thought we were going to get it may be less there may be a certain trimming on benefits on the left or the right or the up or the bottom right and then brett it becomes even more complicated if you don't have a a pension to look forward to if you're a self-directed person and you're you know you've made a few investments you've got an rsp maybe a tfsa or whatever but you don't have any guarantee what's Whatsoever of a monthly stipend beyond whatever CPP and right. OAC, that's a pretty uh, minimal cash flow to, to yes, exist Yes, a complete reliance on by many people, in fact, that their CPP and the OAS yes. is, is it, right? And that's what I'm going to get, and I'm going to be fine on that. I often even see people coming to my office at the age of 62, 63, and asking me to, f- to, to, to if, they, if I could figure out a way that they can make it to 65, on their current income because when they're 65 they'll get OAS right. right so can they make it because right now they can't um, and it's really because years before that 
they didn't sit down and think about their cash flow and what they needed to do in order to put themselves in a position where that wasn't a problem. So if you're counseling someone and they're in debt and they come to you for that one hour free visit and it turns out that they, they should probably file a consumer proposal, that would be the most practical remedy. But they're on the verge of retirement. They're going to they're gonna carry their payments into retirement. That is that doable? Is that legal? Sometimes, oh yeah, it's completely legal. Okay. The question really is whether it's not whether it's doable. Uh, you're practical. And yeah, right? and in fact, what and, and again, that is our job. Our job is to sit down with you, look at your situation, not just in isolation today, but yes, if you are 63, and in two years you intend to retire, right? And you file a consumer proposal that I don't know, let's say arguably is $600 a month, which right now might be doable, sure. But suddenly in two years is not. Then in a situation like that, I am going to say to you can you do this and in fact would you would not going bankrupt be far more preferable or is the kind of consumer proposal we file different maybe it's not and consumer proposals are really limited only by the imagination of the trustee oh so it's not a cookie cutter one size fits it, all it, it, it can be i mean very often they are they look very very much the same you know right. the same house you know this pink yellow and green yep. but in many cases your trustee can look at your personal financial situation and say you know what there's different ways to do this. What if we did it this way? And and that is why we are the professionals, because there's no way that the ordinary guy on the street would be able to look at that and be able to figure it out himself. Not a lot of time here, but what happens if you file one of these proposals and somewhere along the line you drop the ball and you don't make the payments? Worst case scenario is you have to go bankrupt, so you file a bankruptcy. But there are a number of ways your trustee, if your trustee believes that you are earnest and honest and you really This was just a glitch. This was just a glitch. Right. Your trustee can, let's call it save, do a, a, a Hail Mary and save your proposal for you, buy you a bit of time. Okay. So it is, uh, it, it's not as, as etched in stone as no. some might think, no. as long as the spirit of the of the agreement is you being have, followed you have hit it on the nail the whole concept is the spirit of the bankruptcy and solvency act is to rehabilitate the honest and unfortunate debtor that right. is the job of the bankruptcy and solvency act so if the trustee believes that that's who you are the trustee will try help you to make it work and this from the man who just moments ago said there's always a solution yes and hope Let's not leave that out of the out of our parting thoughts hope, here, Brett. Hope. There's always hope, and if you're at the end of your tether and you're you're just not able to see even a glimmer of hope, perhaps it's time you picked up the phone or shot an email off to our friends at Abacan and Associates. Brett is a most approachable man. You can find his contacts and all of those of his colleagues on their website at abacan.com. A b a k h a n dot com. Brett Luckin, always great to see you. Thank you, Sidney. Thanks Thank for you. coming by. Thanks very much. And we'll see you all next time, right Keep here on. on Boomer Life.